Greetings RC friends, welcome to Props and Wheels. Today I have the fastest RC airplane I have ever owned. It is Durafly Goblin. So this I got as my birthday present from my sister and my brother-in-law. So big shout out goes to my sister Eighan and my bro Dallas. Thank you guys, you are great. And they are also kind enough to get me the battery as well. So here I have a graphene battery, 1.5 amp hours, and 4 cell, that's 14.8 volts. And it has great rating. So let's get started by opening this up. But before uh, I do that, I'm going to say, hopefully later today, this is going to be the fastest airplane I have ever flown, and also fastest airplane I have ever landed. I will start with the battery because I want to charge it while I am assembling the airplane. Let's see, they, they claim that this comes 30% charge. So I'm just going to connect to my cell meter and see how much charge there is. So it is showing 24% over here. about 15 volts. So while it's charging, I'm going to continue unboxing this plane and setting it up. Of course, I already took a peek. <laughs> this is not the first time I'm taking the top off, but I haven't opened up anything. They included also the clevises or control horns. I'll decide later which one to use, bowling or these clevises. And this one is only the rotor stabilizer. There's no rudder on it. No rudder. This is a three-channel airplane. It's also called bank and yank. So you bank with the ailerons and you yank it with the elevator here. And of course you have throttle. In terms of the receiver, I'm planning to use this Storm RCS603 DSMX receiver. I have used one of these in my, one of my other planes before successfully. I didn't have any issues. And I'm going to use my Radio Master TX16S to bind to it. That's my new radio. I already have two planes. This is going to be the third plane on it. ESC is in the bottom. Already installed. 45 amp ESC. It's Aerostar. So you can see it here. To take the hatch off, they put like a little tab here. It is you know, on one side has two magnets over here, and there's a tab in the front. And then here is the battery compartment with the correct connection XT60 connection. So that's good. I have the same connection on the battery. It is quite tight in here, but it should do. Now I wish it was one of those uh, screw installations, removable, but they made it this way, so it is what it is. And I am planning to use hot glue. Most people, they don't like what hot glue they say, it's going to make your plane heavier and it's not as good as you know, other glues. Well, I had bad experience with foam safe CA, it's very brittle, it's very hard very easy to use hot glue and I had very good experience with hot glue and it just dries so quickly so I'm, this is a Sunday morning I'm hoping to put this all together and then just go on the field the location that we fly at and then fly it today later these are the wires going to the, to the 
the aileron servos, two servos, one for each wing right and left, and then just a Y linkage. So it will be using just one channel, so total three channels on the receiver. Just going to a quick test fit here. So it's going on like, like that as well. Alright, I'm just going to get my glue gun and get started. Nice and straight, no issues here, everything is nice and straight. I'm just going to fill a little bit of uh, those gaps, a little bit more hot glue, and then we'll be ready to work on the wing. And finally, I'm going to install the, what I call the skid on the bottom. Alright, all good. The skin is in place as well. I may end up putting a little bit of uh, tape over it, maybe, I'm not sure. I'll decide later, but it's time for installing the radio. So here's my receiver with the connection. So this is this lead is coming from the ESC. It's connected to the throttle channel, and then this is this this Y is coming from the ailerons. It's aileron, and this wire goes to this servo on the back, which controls the elevator that's connected to the third one elevator. This is just a regular receiver. It doesn't have any stabilization, so I'll be flying it full manual. And hence, I have to make sure that I set up the troughs correctly and not too much. Otherwise, uh, it will become probably uncontrollable. I'm going to put some hook and loop tape, double sticky, over here and then just put it on this side. So one of the antennas is going backwards and then this one I'm just going to put with a little tape towards the front. The antenna is in place as well, on the side, over here, as well as the other one going through.
through that hole to the back. Here I'm going to show you how to create a new model on my TF16S. So let's power it on. Long press. And next I'm going to press and hold this button. And then says so model select. And then I'm going to press and hold this button again. Press again, create model. Select plane. Does your model have a motor? Yes. So I'm going to skip that. It's on channel 3. So I'm going to press page down button. So next page. Number of ailerons on your model. So in this case, what I'm going to select is one or two with Y cables because I have Y cable. Press this. It's on channel 1 next page and my model does not have flaps next page got tail configuration so I don't have any rudder so press this one go back one channel for elevator no rudder and it is on channel 2 next page press that one yes all is well create the plane so it has been successfully created, press return and here is my model 12. Now let's select that model and return to the main page, model 12 is selected. Now I want to change things on the model. So I long press on this model button and the model name and I'm going to start changing this. Goblin. And then for binding, I'm just going to go up to the bottom of the page. I don't want to track all the way down. So up. So this should be internal RF is going to be on. I'll be using internal modules on. It's a multi-module. Click that one. Come here. So DSM. DSM2, mine is DSMX. So DSMX has two options 11 milliseconds, 22 milliseconds. So since this is going to be a fast plane which I want to control, very precise, I'm going to select this one. Now, the next part is binding, but what I need to do is connect the battery coming to this. The bind plug is already in. As you can see over here, so my bind plug is in there. Pull it up. So this will be ready to bind. I just need to connect the battery. I'm just going to connect this one, it doesn't matter. It's a 3S battery. As you can see, it is blinking over here, and I'm just going to find binding. And it's blinking a little slower. Okay, you heard that, the beeping and all that, and that light is not blinking anymore, it's bound. So the next, what I'm going to do is disconnect the battery, pull the bind plug out, I don't need that anymore, it's bound. Come out of this menu, just press return, return, goblin is selected, turn this off just for a good measure and then turn it back on.
thank you for the switch warning. I'm not using that switch. Okay, Goblin is selected. And now what I'm going to do is... Pull the throttle all the way up. I just want to calibrate the ESC the first time I'm going to use it. So it knows what is 100% throttle and then what is 0% throttle. So put it to 100%. Is away from me just for a good measure. So the prop is not facing me, it's just not going to hit anything. And then connect the battery. Pull it back down all the way after those beeps. So three beeps, so it says three cell battery. Spinning in the right orientation, blowing air towards my hand. So that's good. And let's ch check the controls very quickly. This one I haven't connected the elevator yet. So as you can see, I'm right aileron is going down and I push it right, so I have to reverse the aileron controls and let's quickly check. And I do up elevator. These should be pushing out, as you can see over here. And then I haven't connected them yet, but they are pushing out for up, pulling them in for down. Show you just to show you how to reverse one of the controls. In this case, the aileron. I press this long press model and then I'm going to go page down to here outputs and channel one that's aileron select and then come over here click it should be reversed now let's take a look Right, right aileron goes up, left, left aileron goes up. Now I'm going to set up all the linkages and adjust and just come back to the beat. Now all control surfaces look nice and centered and moving in the right direction. So up elevator, down elevator, right bank, left bank. Good, so the next thing is I'm going to put in the, the right battery, the correct battery, and adjust the CG. So I marked the CG, it is 45 to 50 millimeters from the leading edge here. And I put a little dab of hot glue and colored it with a red Sharpie. So I can feel it without looking and it's also visible in good contrast. And when I uh, looked at the CG, it looks like it's still a little tail heavy. And I put this battery in. And if you look inside that compartment, it goes down to those little foam tabs and then stops there. So I need to be able to push it a little further. And there, you know, beyond that, there's a firewall. It's going to stop it anyway. But I, I want it against that black firewall when I put, put it in. So it will give me maybe another um, half an inch or so, one third of an inch if I cut those off. So I'm going to do that now. So I was able to cut that foam. The battery didn't, still didn't fit, so I ended up cutting a little bit from the top as well as you can see over here. That section over here top so now the battery fits all the way to the back battery as far back as possible and go on and what the CG looks like I'm just going to put my finger right at the spot it still looks slightly tail heavy so I'm going to show this to some of my friends at the field when I get there 
needed, I'm just going to put probably one or two little lead weights in the nose. Everything else seems to be fine. Now I'm going to check the throws, make sure that I don't have too much throws and everything looks good. The elevator moves quite a bit. What I'm reading here is it's moving about 12 millimeters each way. And the instructions say for the elevator, six to 10 millimeters each way. It's way too much. I'm going to decrease that on the radio. And then let's check the aileron. About 20 millimeters, and what is uh, recommended is 6 to 12 millimeters. So I need to decrease that as well, quite a bit. For ailerons, I change it from 100% to 50%, and for elevators to, to down to 75%. Now I have for elevators uh, 8 millimeter throw, and for the ailerons 9 millimeter throw, which is pretty good. This is right in between these numbers, so. I think it should give me a good balance. My Durafly Goblin is all ready. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video of the maiden flight and also hopefully the maiden landing. Enjoy this wonderful hobby. Stay safe and healthy.